So obviously the CBN and its decision to revoke the licenses of these three banks was with the view that they wouldn't be recapitalized come the end of September. And it was largely informed by the investigations that have been undertaken by the National Deposit uh, Insurance Corporation. Of the 24 banks you've been investigating in the last two years, what are your diagnostics basically of the financial system in Nigeria? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, in, in recent years, since the uh, financial sector reforms have been instituted, there have been tremendous improvements in the financial system in uh, Nigeria. Uh, foremost of all is the improved risk management practices that we now experience in the banking sector. Prior to this, there was a lot of uh, laxity in risk management by uh, the banks. And uh, we also have much improved uh, corporate governance practices in Nigeria now. Um, the confidence of the investing public, of the depositors, is uh, much increased than it was before because they have seen that there's greater oversight, uh, functions of both uh, regulatory authorities, the central bank, and the Nigeria Deposit Insurance uh, Corporation. So generally, we have a much more stable and sound uh, financial uh, system in Nigeria today. All right, let's talk about where the three banks that are under scrutiny fell short. Because as we said earlier on, seven banks have uh, either been successfully recapitalized or they've signed TRAs, or one of them is just in the process of a completion. But these three banks, what happened there? Uh, well, you know, um, there's a continuous uh, review uh, from uh, a regulatory point of view of the financial position of all the banks in Nigeria. This goes on annually and quarterly, and as a matter of fact, on a monthly basis, returns are received uh, from each of the banks. These returns are made directly to the central bank, and uh, this information is shared with the Nigeria Deposit Insurance uh, Corporation. From the analysis of the information we have been receiving from these banks, the trend for the three banks in question has been actually downward. We expected that by now, like the other banks have made efforts to um, source for prospective investors, mm -hmm. riding on the back of the CBN guarantees and the acquisition of their non-performing loans, yeah. we thought that uh, they, they would ride on the back of that. But for these three banks, the reverse was the case. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though there was a deadline of September 30, uh, from all indications, they could not even meet that deadline. They were not close to meeting those deadlines. So this intervention was, uh, was imperative at this point. Now, effectively, their assets and liabilities being transferred through bridge banks. What are these bridge banks and why this option? Uh, well, um, the statutory provisions in Nigeria that guide the Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation uh, as a, uh, a regulator of uh, these banks and a depositor of insurance uh, of insured funds, uh, the corporation has various options. Now, the bridge bank option was chosen in this instance because it creates the least impact, least systemic impact on the financial system in Nigeria. Liquidation would have been a more drastic option. Yeah. But uh, the bridge bank option is such that a new bank effectively is created by the corporation which is licensed by the central bank to go carry on the business of uh, banking. Uh, the corporation, mind you, has the power to transfer the assets and liabilities of the failing bank. It's a failure resolution option. So this is what we did in this particular instance. Mm -hmm. The uh, assets and liabilities of the three banks were transferred to the um, newly created banks. They are bridge banks because they statutorily have a limited lifespan mm -hmm. between two and three years. And what the corporation is supposed to do is to find buyers for these bridge banks and then uh, the bridge banks cease to exist. In this case, what has happened is that the corporation found a buyer almost instantaneously in Amcon. So that uh, Amcon has taken over these banks and they are right. effectively uh, uh, full-fledged banks. Amcon now has to decide what program to run these banks through. Let's talk about Amcon's role because for the longest time, and I'm you know, presenting a simplistic view, Amcon was simply there to mop up non-performing loans and try to re-establish liquidity within the banking system. Effectively now they must manage these three banks through a board. That's a much bigger role than was previously anticipated. The capacity to do so, do they have it? 
And well, you know, Amcon is an is an asset management company, and uh, managing assets sometimes goes beyond uh, simply mopping up uh, non-performing loans. What has happened here is that, like you said, really they have a bigger role, but definitely they are equipped for it. Statutorily, they have the power to do this. These banks have been transferred over to them, and uh, the first thing that Amcon has done is put in place a tested board and management to take over the uh, running of these banks. Mm -hmm. So there is no question about their ability or their cap uh, capacity to manage these banks. They have to come out to the timetable. And in the meantime, efforts will be ongoing to find the final uh, uh, investors and acquirers mm -hmm. for these banks. At that point, Amco will transfer the assets to the new owners and then mm -hmm. its job is done. And finally, just clarify for myself, Talking about this timetable, did you just say earlier on that we're talking about three years at the most? Um, well, um, when NDIC took over the banks under the platform of bridge banks, the law allows NDIC, that's the um, Deposit Insurance Corporation, to run these banks, manage them for two years or a maximum of three years. An extension would be granted if necessary. But now that they have been transferred to Amcon, they are not, no longer bridge banks. So Amcon has to decide. But in the interest of Amcon okay. and in the interest of the amount of money it has infused into these banks, which it has to recover, the sooner it gets acquirers, the better. Great stuff. So that timetable is not limited by the three-year uh, schedule of uh, NDIC Act.